This week on Burnout, the ultimate drag race challenge. My experts and I take 10 driver hopefuls and put them through their paces. And our teams find out who their drivers are. That driving out there was piss poor quality. I would be very, very scared to be out there in a car with the motor with you guys. Previously on Burnout. The red team just got a truck full of Summit parts in and yet we have nothing. None of these six cars start. These teams will go to a car, diagnose the problem. God, undefeated. Another blue team failure. We need hours. It doesn't matter how good you are. You can't build a car within 20 hours. If you are interested in being one of the drivers for Burnout, we'll be meeting in the student lounge. If it goes down like this, where somebody else is gonna come in and drive our car, I'm not gonna build it. Been a lot of griping, yes? yes? I want three people from each team. You guys will have a shot at being the driver. Finally, he's come to his senses because that's the way it should have been from the get-go. Parts, 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 parts. <laughs> yes, parts. I'm totally not a dumbass. Finally, after three weeks, we finally got some parts. It feels great to have some redemption. I know some people were kind of getting a little skeptical about my efforts. So apparently Brian does know how to use the phone. Start tearing open. You want us to start going through everything? Quickly, then you can put everything back in the box. We've got our subframe connectors, we got some of our engine stuff, we got our motor plate, we got our gauges. So leave it in the box. We're not working on anything either. Not today. Cup, can you? I've been sitting here looking at the shell of a car for a long time now, and hey, we actually have a chance to do something today. We have things that can be done finally. He said, go home, call it a day. For me, that was like, holy cow, I'm ready. We have stuff to do, but it ain't gonna be till we get the motor. It's gonna be the big work time. The motor's still at the machine shop, and we're not sure when it's coming back. In the meantime, we can be doing any number of things with the parts we do have. But for now, it's Chops' way or the highway. It's rear suspension parts. Four links. You know what? How about four inches? You want that? Four inches of what? Can you believe four it? inches of short, fat <laughs> You're full of <laughs> I really think we should gather up as a team and try to get a game plan as a team, not just one person's idea of what should be done. We're done opening stuff. We need to do something. We need to get someone in charge. We need to get someone to get done or we're not going anywhere. And I talked to Chops and he just shook his head yes and he didn't do anything about it. Play tested our candidates from UTI and picked the four best drivers who would go up against the blue team and the red team for a shot at driving on race day. We're all going to be put up against each other at Bondurant and see who's the best wheelman. Right side point three, one with the team. I remember when I was a little kid, I saw on television a uh, drag race. I've been fascinated with it throughout my life. So I thought, here's my chance. The first test is to see which driver has the fastest reaction time on our virtual drag strip. A lot of people haven't done a pro tree before, so they're racing off a of reaction time, just releasing a button. It's really pretty simple. When the light turns green, you release it, the fastest time qualifies. Left side, point, three, seven. Whoa. Yes, buddy. This is bull. This ain't the way you drag race. It ain't all on a freaking hand switch. It's on a switch in a car that runs and you got that adrenaline pump and you got that noise. You're sitting here in a helmet, you can't hear your all your vibrations. Like, what the is going on? Red light, green light, go. I win. That's how you drag race. It'd be more qualifying to see who could get the highest score on Forza than pushing a button. For the qualifiers, our second test is to impress Clay. Congratulations, making it down to this smaller group from a large group. I want to spend a few minutes with each and every one of you to determine which four will be moving on. Mike, come see me. Yes, sir. How you doing? We wanted the best possible driver for race day. Obviously, they're going to have to do more than just push a button. Each candidate filled out an application detailing 
their drag racing experience. That experience, along with my overall impression, determined who was going to Mondrian. I have drag raced my motorcycle. I know I can handle it. Eight seconds on a motorcycle is insane. Ted seconds in a car, you got doors around you, it's gonna be easy. Matthew, please step in. Matt is hearing impaired, but he has the fastest reaction time of anyone. That tells me he is focused and won't be rattled on race day. I'll be able to ignore all the background noises, people talking and that type of distraction and make little improvements on things based on my visual acuity. Come convince me why you can drive one of these race cars. I've been drag racing for probably about six or seven years. I got into bracket racing about two years ago. I was running about a 12 flat class. Clay Milliken, how are you? I'm an adrenaline junkie, 10 second passes. It's definitely right up my alley. The four of you I'm about to choose will be joining me at the Bob Bondurant School of High Performance Driving. Hell yeah! Chris Palumbo. Woo. Matthew Poe. Yeah. Mike Pope. Yeah. Scott Fitzhugh. Yeah. I want to congratulate you for making it. May the best driver come out of all of this. Coming up next on Burnout. Today's challenge is so critical that I flout here myself to be part of the judging system. Uh, don't hot dog too much and screw yourself. That driving out there was piss poor quality. I would be really, really worried on the racetrack. So you guys got a lot of work to do. Today, we are finally going to Bondurant. We're gonna have our driver challenge. We're gonna decide who gets to drive for the red team and who gets to drive for the blue team. When I saw Kerry climb out of the car, it really hit me how big of a day it was gonna be. Burnout drivers, welcome to Firebird Raceway, the Bob Bondurant School for High Performance Driving. Yeah. Today's challenge is so critical that I flout here myself to be part of the judging system. There's a lot that goes into being a racer, whether it's two wheels or four wheels. I have heart, determination, and most of all, talent. If you ain't got those three, you're wasting your time. So it's time to dig deep, get real serious, and put it all on the line out there. Helping me judge will be champion racers who you probably all know. Got Cruz? Yeah! And of course, you know Clay? Yeah! Jason? basically started off doing what these guys are doing. I built a car from scratch when I was younger and had a lot of help from friends and it's brought me to where I'm at today. Those are my heroes basically. I've watched them ever since I was about 10 years old and went to my first drag race. There will be three challenges, slalom, obstacle avoidance, and skid car. And after each, one or more drivers will be eliminated. Teams, any questions? No, sir. Okay, get to your starting positions. Bondurant School teaches car control and that's what you need for driving a fast drag car. You are clear to go. The first round was just cones in a row real tightly together, and if anyone's seen slalom, it's just weaving in and out. Just don't eat any cones. You hit cones, that's like hitting people, cars, whatever. It's no bueno. It means you lost control. If you hit a cone, you shouldn't be driving. Go ahead. Go. Hell yeah. I was nervous. I was fixing to drive a car that I'd never driven before in front of a bunch of professional drivers. How are you doing good? Excellent. Some guys can handle the speed of the slalom. There you go. <laughs> he gave us the look, he got, dude. We got some hot shot points in there. And others just can't. I don't think he's going fast enough. Oh, Victor, Victor just missed. knocked one out. It's good if those cones ain't drivers or people. Yeah. He's, he's done. First cut's always the worst. I'm sad to say. Victor, you're up, buddy. You're out, bud. Bad as I hate to say this, Matthew, we're gonna have to cut you, buddy. Our second challenge of the day was obstacle avoidance. You entered it one way, and there were three lanes and three lights, and if a light turned green, you picked that lane. So you'd have to quick react, get over there, straighten it out, and get back on the throttle. This is definitely starting to separate a few of the guys yeah, it out. Is. It you're is. starting to see guys, speed's inconsistent and getting a little out of control. James is definitely showing out. The second challenge, the pressure really started coming down. Scott's looking really, really good. Man, Wyatt's moving up on the list. Oh, That's twice oh, now. Man. I think Mike is in trouble. Ah, oh, Brandon clipped the cone a little bit right then, didn't he? You know what, right, this, make the cut. this cut's going to be harder. Yeah. You did good. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. It's out of our hands, man. Yeah, well, it was in my hands. <laughs> this is round two of the cuts, guys. That driving out there was piss poor quality. I would be very, very scared to be out there in a car with a motor with you guys. 
So you guys got a lot of work to do. When your name's called, please step forward and stay in line. Darren. James. Wyatt. Christopher. Chris P. Scott. If your name was not called, you are not advancing. I have no clue how much this is affecting me. I'm probably gonna be slouching for a while. I mean, not on purpose, but it's just who I am. I'm really hard on myself. The skid control car was like driving on ice. They've got this Cadillac on a hydraulic system and they pick up the back tires of the car just a little bit. So they just make enough traction to go, but they're sliding back and forth and you've got a counter steer to control the car to keep it going the direction you want. And Whoever that is down there in 21 is rocking, y'all. Yeah, yeah. That's Wyatt, wow. Uh-oh. Wyatt, you're the man, brother. I was actually really nervous. I calmed myself down. Just started visualizing things. Same exact thing I do when I race back home. Scott's been our show out on everything so far. He's doing good. With the skid car, we could see who really wanted it and who was only out there to screw around. Oh, <laughs> uh, don't hot dog too much and screw yourself. I was definitely showboating, but I was having fun. I was at Bonneron. I'd say Darren's having issues. Right? Yeah, serious. Darren's definitely struggling. Oh, too much. Oh, <laughs> you know, being able to get somebody else's car that's not mine, the gas they're paying for, tires, all that kind of stuff. It's like, don't threaten me with a good time. I'm going to roast these tires. Even though it's somebody else's car and it's somebody else's gas, making mistakes like that really hurts you as a driver, but it also hurts your team. After a full day of challenges, it was time to decide who would be behind the wheel on race day. Well guys, it's been a long day of driving and it's come down to you final six. So with that said, the two final winners are James and Wyatt. I was pleasantly surprised to hear my name be called out as the red team's driver. I was really excited. I think my heart stopped. At the moment, I'm, I don't know, I'm gonna say pretty much on cloud nine. Every one of you guys did a great you guys job. You did a great job. Yeah. Yes. You guys all kicked ass. Thank you guys for coming out. Yeah, Y'all all did great. Bond around wasn't just a challenge for the drivers. It was also a challenge for the red and blue teams. And one team had plenty to gain. I asked Clay to go back to UTI and announce the overall winner. James. You're out there hot dogging, trying to show out on the skid pad, trying to uh, be a drift racer. Yeah. You cost your team. I'm awarding Wyatt the winner of the competition, and blue team gets 15 hours. Yeah. Coming up next on Burnout. Making a seat for a freaking five-year-old. James, who's driving for the red team, he's a little vertically challenged. I think it's done. I think Scott's done. He's All right, guys, we got a race car build, so uh, let's get this going. Today, we're working on the front and the back, and in the rear, we're installing our brake lines. I hit my head on this thing eight times already today. It's the perils of working with short people. Up front, it's all about the little man. Getting his seating and steering dialed in so he's comfortable behind the wheel. So I took the factory steering column out of the car. I took all the extra weight off of it, the turn signals and the airbag, and I probably shaved a couple of pounds off of it. So the most important tweak I have to make is to break the steering lock. This is a little plastic piece, so I don't break my neck at the track. If you're driving, you're gonna put it in the wall anyways. Kiss my ass. Move your nose out of the way. Big John. <laughs> Big John. He's a <laughs> hole. Nah, I like the guy a lot. He might be a little snappy sometimes. Making a seat for a freaking five-year-old. He means it with love. Me being the five-year-old, because I'm short. <laughs> I love the kid to death, but I don't think he's the right person in the seat. When I heard Scott wanted to drive for one of the teams, I automatically picked Scott. Just more time in the seat. You can't think about nothing but that finish line. James, he's too concerned about everybody else. And if you try to critique James, he doesn't like being critiqued. I can't see shit. For James to sit in the Mustang and actually see over the dash, I gotta turn the racing seat into a booster seat. Bring it up anymore? He's a little vertically challenged, depending upon what kind of hood they put on. If it has a cowl on it, there's no way he's gonna be able to see over that cowl. He's right. What are you guys looking at? Right now, I don't have any knee. He looks kind of like a granny in there. I think it's done. I think Scott's done. Yeah. 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 Right. off. What was that all about? 
Grudge Hold is my metal band. It's good people moving music. I've been playing with the band for about eight months now. I'm the drummer. Our lead singer, lead guitarist, rhythm guitarist, Kevin Janudis, he gets band members in and they get a really good thing going and they get some good stuff recorded and then everybody bails on him. I can't afford to bail on my band, but my schedule is definitely filling up. My wife asked me, she goes, you know, you've got this car thing going on, you're going to school at UTI, you've got grudge hole going on, what do you want to do? I said, well, I want to be a rock star that builds cars. To make things worse, we just started recording new material, so my band needs me now more than ever. So like when you do this live, you're not gonna just like open it up and kill yourself in a Mustang? No, we're gonna have, they're gonna give us some practice runs. Brad is our manager. He's been with Kevin since the beginning. They've gone through a lot of struggles together and they've got a lot of time and money, a lot of heart invested in this band. They've had a lot of problems in the past finding drummers who can not only tolerate Kevin, but also play the caliber of music to follow some of his guitar riffs. It's as safe as it can be for as fast as it's gonna go. And Grudge Hold is your life insurance policy holder? I haven't signed anything with you guys yet. As far as me driving the car, they just don't want me to get hurt because they've had such a hard time finding a drummer. I kind of don't want to get hurt either. I need a whole drummer, dude. I don't need a one-hour drummer. This isn't Def Leppard. <laughs> Coming up next on Burnout. You really need to get a game plan though, Charles. There's nothing to be done, there's nothing to be done. It's time to build a car here, and the goof around time is over. Take the trash out, Chops. I'm busy doing this I ain't doing shit, man. Everybody, go home. Day's over. Tune in and get that door done, tune in, we're gone. Today is another chapter in the Chops Just Wants to Go Home saga, and the team's patience is wearing thin. I told you about the guy earlier that wanted to Oh, or let me finish. Sorry, sorry. There's been several instances where it's like, oh, let's just call it a day. And the rest of the team's like, are you kidding me? Well, we really need to get a game plan, though, Chops. I know. So you got to sit down and think what everybody's going to be doing. Yeah, it depends on parts. If there's nothing to be done, there's nothing to be done. Even though waiting on parts, you still can plan out who's going to be doing what. I didn't want them wasting the time clock if there wasn't a lot to do. Chops. There's stuff that needs to be done right now. Whether you're going to do it now or later, you may as well do it now. Right now, Brian's cutting the excess weight from the doors. Wyatt and I are gonna mount the radiator, and Richard's tackling the thing he loves, body work. No one's thinking about that as important as building the car, but if we have to do body work and paint as part of the project, that's a huge part, because that takes the most time. I ain't worried about popping damn dents. Chops really pissed me off. He was getting pissed off at Richard because he was trying to get some dings out of the door, but then he's like, don't do that. You got all this Like what? Take this trash out. We have Go two ahead. dips here. Take the trash out, Chops. I'm busy doing this I ain't doing he started freaking out. They're going at each other. He just said, "Stop!" Everybody, go home. Day's over. All right, Brian. And then he says, "Go home." And I'm, like, I'm not going home. You know, I'm not gonna let you to tell me to go home. It wasn't just me that kept on working. It was pretty much everybody that kept on working on whatever their small little project was. Right after Chops had his meltdown, Mr. Schultz came in and said, "Enough is enough." Stop the clock. Got it. We got to figure out what the heck we're doing here, guys. We just wanted to have a come to Jesus talk, if you will. It's time to build a car here. And as far as I see, we haven't done anything yet, except goofed around. And the goof around time is over. We have a car sitting there fully disassembled that's got to get put together here. And the only way that this is going to happen is if this team comes together and gels and we have somebody, I don't know who it is, I don't care who it is, and I don't care if it's me, but we need to sit down and we need to organize. Because I don't know what I'm really doing in this project. I can't just come in and say, hey, I'm going to hang the air freshener. You got to tell me if you want me to hang the air freshener, you know? To be able to organize and get this thing planned out, to be able to finish on time, I think is going to be a huge key to success. But we can't be running around here like a ship without a rudder. Somebody needs to grab a hold of that rudder. Start to think about that because you're our crew chief, right? You're still, you're still our crew chief, correct? Yeah. Start thinking about what you thought about when you were picked for this project. That's the feeling we need back starting today. I'm not really going to point the blame at, at, at anybody completely. This is a team. We're under Chops' leadership right now, so everything's going to fall on the captain. One, two, three. Team Blue! We kind of decided as a team we wanted to give him a second chance instead of just throwing him under the bus first time. We did it privately. Somebody else was like, well, let's give him one more week. Now that we've brought up these problems, let's give him a week to change. If we don't start seeing improvement as a team, we would decide something else to do. 
next time on Burnout, the ultimate drag race challenge. Let's race. The team that completes the most laps in those 30 minutes will be the winner. We're going to mutiny no, against no, shots. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even joking. That's what I heard. Pressure's starting to cook everybody. We're starting to see the true colors come out. Hey, failing. Today is the day after yesterday. Who is Chops without Chops? I know y'all had a secret meeting. Chops, step outside for a moment, please.